Hello and welcome to the session friends. My name is Yogesh Kumar. In this session, we are going to talk about Google Kubernetes. This session is going to be quick introduction to Kubernetes and its key components. So first of all, what is Kubernetes? Friends, Kubernetes is a open source system for managing containerized applications across a cluster of nodes. Many times, Kubernetes also referred as Kube or KHS. Basically, Kubernetes provides container grouping, load balancing, and auto healing plus scaling features. This project was started by Google, and Red Hat is the second major contributor, along with Microsoft, HP, VMware, SileStack, and others. Basically, Kubernetes is designed around a single master server and set of nodes that you host the application on. Each node will host one or more containers that makes up the application. Couple of things before uh, starting with Kubernetes, you need to have basic understanding of Docker. In past, I have uh, recorded a video on Docker basics. You can search that on my YouTube channel. If you get Docker basic understanding, then it will be easy for you to understand Kubernetes. Next thing comes, why to use Kubernetes? Reasons are Kubernetes is lightweight and easy to understand solution. The second thing, Kubernetes is modern tooling. Basically, it got CLI as well as REST API support. So it makes its perfect tool for automated applications or the applications which need uh, REST API support. Portability is another great feature because Kubernetes provide public, private, and hybrid cloud deployments, such as you can deploy Kubernetes on Amazon Cloud, Google Cloud Engine, locally on Vagrant, VMware, or on physical servers. Next thing, Kubernetes is highly scalable solution. Basically, if I say a word, you can easily scale it up or scale it down. So that's uh, something about Kubernetes. Next feature, Kubernetes is self-healing. It can take care of auto placement of Docker containers, or basically in Kubernetes terms, they are called ports. It can manage auto restart or auto replication of the containers or the ports. This is something I'm going to cover in next slides, but uh, to give you a quick idea, what self healing mean? Let's say you have created a replication controller where you have defined okay, minimum number of containers need to be three or four. Let's say one of the physical node or Kubernetes node dies due to some reason, then automatically Kubernetes will trigger the build of uh, other nodes, like to maintain the number of replicas on the other available physical nodes. So that's something self-failing and auto restart. Auto restart basically if a port is not responding due to some reason, then Kubernetes can take care to auto restart that port. Kubernetes is good for rolling updates. That's another great feature. Now you guys may be thinking, why to use Kubernetes? Is in market any other solution? Yep, definitely there are. Apache Mesos, that's one solution, Hadoop Yarn, and the popular one, Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm is basically Docker cluster. So there are other alternatives, but Kubernetes is popular one because Google is maintaining it and it's widely used in Google. So good to have basic understanding of Kubernetes. Next thing. We need to understand Kubernetes architecture. If we understand architecture, it will make uh, very easy to understand this particular solution or you can say this particular tool. Uh, this is the diagram uh, of architecture which I got from Wiki and I found it very useful. So let me tell you something. Kubernetes works in master client model. Basically, in a cluster, you will have a master server, which is referred as Kubernetes master. 
that server runs a couple of components you can see on my screen like this particular server is running API server controller manager scheduler and etcd there are other other servers which are basically kubernetes nodes nodes are servers which basically host the containers or ports and uh, basically the host application so in a single cluster you can have multiple nodes kubernetes nodes or sometimes they are also referred as minions i will come to that uh, explanation in a couple of seconds in next slides but to give you understanding these are the components which are running on master server and these are the components which are running on nodes and uh, between nodes communication happens using flannel and there are other options like you can use wavenet you can use open v switch there are multiple things flant is the popular one so i will cover this particular components in detail in the coming slides so i will revisit this particular architecture after explaining the components then it will make more sense for you guys to understand about this architecture next thing let's talk about these services then this architecture will make more sense to you first of all we need to understand kubernetes building blocks so kubernetes does work as cohesive package there are several components at play each specific row kubernetes got a specific collection of terms and some of which are overloaded in container cloud space so what is kubernetes master that's a main building block kubernetes master as i mentioned that's a single host which will manage the cluster and run several core kubernetes services master component provide the clusters control plane basically that's a host which is managing the other nodes master components are responsible for making global decisioning about the cluster basically scheduling scheduling mean uh, kubernetes master takes care to decide on which particular node a port need to be created or you can say master is responsible to identify okay this particular node is having less load okay let's trigger the build on that particular node or that node is heavily loaded okay let's pick free one if you're creating replica master takes care okay on which particular set of nodes that port need to be created and uh, master is also responsible for detecting and responding to the cluster events let's say you restart a port you start a port you stop a port so all these states are maintained within the master so it takes care of uh, maintaining the states or detecting the state changes what is a kubernetes node many times guys kubernetes node is also referred as minion uh, actually till version 1.6 i believe uh, it was referred as kubernetes minion but now it's referred as kubernetes node if you see somewhere i have mentioned minion basically minion and node they are interchangeable terms if you have worked on salt stack even salt stack calls uh, the client side machines basically minion so that's similar terminology but uh, in case of kubernetes just try to say kubernetes node basically a node is a worker machine in kubernetes as i mentioned previously it was also called minion each node has a service necessary to run ports and is maintained by the master component as i mentioned master is responsible to manage the services but kubernetes node that's basically running the ports which are basically managed by the master a service on the node include docker kubelet and kube proxy so these are the services as i mentioned uh, for containers like docker is a solution there are other solution also but docker is a popular one so kubernetes can work with different container solutions in this particular demo we will stick with docker which is the default one on kubernetes kubernetes master and nodes can be configured on physical or virtual or like even hybrid setup let's say for master you got physical for nodes you got a virtual machine even that setup is possible but i will prefer to maintain uh, 
similar setup if you are on amazon cloud okay go with amazon cloud for master and notes if you got google cloud go with google cloud if you got uh, let's say virtual setup like vmware backend go with that particular setup so now let's talk about kubernetes components in detail then i will jump to the architecture diagram then it will make more sense to you first of all api server it always runs on master node api server is used as rest api endpoint for managing most aspects of the kubernetes cluster we know apis are used when a developer or uh, some web application want to make a call to your machine using api call so in that way this particular service is getting used a replication controller again that runs on master node it ensures number of specified pod replicas are always running by starting or shutting down ports what is mean uh, let's say you have uh, requested like minimum number of 3 pod replicas in the replication controller then uh, replication controller service is going to make sure there are always 3 running replicas let's say one of the physical node dies where one of the replica was running then kubernetes replication controller service will make sure it triggers the build of third replica on uh, healthy nodes scheduler that again runs on master scheduler basically finds a suitable host where new ports will be reside okay what it mean uh, scheduler checks okay what is the load on target node that machine is heavily loaded or not healthy or let's say we have configured that machine that don't create any new port on that particular machine let's say we have uh, freeze that particular node and kubernetes scheduler service now okay that node is freezed okay this is not my target to create new port it will check the appropriate uh, or the free node basically next service is etcd which always runs on master node it is a distributed key value store where kubernetes store information about itself about nodes and about ports as well as the services you can say this is registry service for uh, kubernetes if you guys have worked on vcs if you remember like uh, we can create uh, the vcs repository where we keep all the meta about uh, that particular cluster the information that something like etcd next thing is pod which always runs or gets created on nodes it is a single schedulable unit of a docker container it always have unique ip because you know docker container uh generally that works with the dhcp ip and uh, ip is always unique another thing which i haven't mentioned here but uh, for a pod a pod is not a migratable unit like let's say you have created a pod on node 1 you can't migrate it to pod sorry not two i'm repeating if you go to one pod created on node 1 with name pod a you can't migrate similar pod to other node but you can destroy that on one if you are not uh, using it you can create it on second node that something next service is kubelet that always runs on node that's host level pod management it determines the state of pod container based on the pod manifest received from the kubelet master uh, basically what happens whenever you are uh, kicking off pod build you are kicking off that from kubelet master kubelet master then sends the manifest to the node and node determine the state okay like this particular pod need to be started or created so that basically kubelet service that maintains uh, that particular thing and uh, kubelet service communicate with the master using the proxies and kubelet uh, component next thing is proxy again that service runs on the nodes it manages the container network ip address and ports basically based on the network service manifest received from the kubelet master again the service is dependent upon the kubelet masters next component is docker which always runs on node 
because there is no requirement to run docker on the master because we are not going to create uh, docker or ports on master because master is only to manage the nodes and uh, other components so docker always runs on nodes we all know what is docker that's container management solution instead of docker you can use other available container solutions but as i mentioned earlier we will stick with docker because that's a default one next component is c advisor c advisor always runs on nodes it provides container user and understanding of the resource usage and performance characteristics of the running containers so that's something for your resource utilization and uh, performance characteristic data next and very important service which is flannel flannel provides network overlay that allows container to communicate across multiple hosts what it mean uh, you go to two let's say for example you go two different nodes how those two nodes are going to communicate with each other means the docker containers which are created on those two nodes how they will communicate with each other flannel is the component which is going to make a network overlay which will allow the communication between uh, dockers or docker containers across different hosts so this is something about theoretical component now you go to idea about what are the components let me jump to the architecture diagram then i will explain the bits quickly so i'm repeating developer or operator a particular operator hits api server api server then checks with the controller manager or that's application controller and scheduler and etcd is the database where all the information or configuration is saved as i mentioned okay after that when user want to do the activity basically then it communicates with proxies and uh, you can look here like api server basically communicates with kubelets here kubelets and these are the ports ports are virtual entities you can see this particular bridge which is panel that's network between uh, kubernetes nodes and uh, c advisor as i mentioned that's for getting performance of resource utilization stats in this example or this architecture diagram we got two nodes this is cluster complete cluster this is master green one this is first node this is second node so that's something kubernetes architecture and uh, i don't remember exact figure but uh, in version 1.6 of kubernetes you can have multiple nodes i believe it supports thousand nodes and every node can host uh, around 100 ports ports are basically containers as i mentioned so you can think of like how scalable this architecture is for reference like I use this particular Kubernetes page and uh, this Wikipedia article. You can go to website of Kubernetes if you want more understanding. The reason why I'm recording this video because uh, I was struggling to get information uh, because information is available in bit and pieces. And when you are not expert on that particular Kubernetes thing, then you will always struggle. Okay, from where I have to start? So I just thought to record a video to give you idea from where you can start. On Kubernetes. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how you can create your first Kubernetes cluster. Then my idea is once cluster is ready, we will perform some cluster or uh, Kubernetes cluster management operations, like how to disable a node, how to drain a node, um, how to re-enable a node, kind of things. After that, uh, another video I'm going to record that is going to be on Google. Google Kubernetes ports, ports basically how you can create a container inside Kubernetes with the Kubernetes manifests. So that's something idea. Then we will talk about replication controllers. So that's agenda. Uh, stay tuned and watch the next video, which is going to be on Google Kubernetes ports. Thank you. Stay tuned.